the river. See the direction change of the river now. Although although rivers meander and they're not completely accurate, I mean this is the deepest part and you can see how it S's away. So it's a definite change of direction. What we're gonna do is I get the locals over here. Nick, yeah. I want you to call talk to them, see if uh, they'd be willing to bring us across the river. We may have just found ourselves a way across. As the hunter force call in boats, Chris Ryan is plotting another deception by recrossing the river higher up. right you'd want a uh, high ground with very good drainage so during the wet seasons the cache would not flood but if it sat in water for a year or so it would um it would render everything useless and just destroy it any rations ammunition any technical equipment would just uh would just wouldn't work we, we used to do exercises and operations where we put caches in in the jungles and also in eastern germany when the Cold War was at its height. And then, obviously, when uh, communism fell, we then moved in to extract them. All right, fellas, remembering yesterday's brief, uh, the caches that we think they're going after, or he's going after, is on the high ground, which puts us over here. Uh, this track's running on a direct bearing. Looks fresh. Yeah, so it looks fresh, and it's running towards that high ground. Oh, oh yeah. The, uh, Terrain has, has changed now. I'm on the knoll, and it's uh, it's quite steep, as as you can see. It's um, the first real real climb we've we've had up to now. Okay, this is Chris's latest position. He's making excellent progress up towards the cage. We can see that these are beeping every ten minutes. This is why I hate the jungle. We've got track. We've got a good sign here. And we've got what's known as a hot track. A hot track is less than 24 hours old. It's on a bearing and it looks like it's heading for the, the high ground. I mean, a natural bit of jungle is, is that. So something's moved through there and you can see that is, you know, that's unnatural to this particular part. So these, these big palms are giving us a key sign, they get brushed forward and they're pointing in this direction. The next Hunter Forces beacon is up here, so they've obviously crossed the river. If we now scroll up, we'll see where they are now. So we can see that they're pretty much on Chris's trail now and following him up into the jungle. You can see the top now. Have a break when I get there. Get the... Uh... Should pull it out and start studying it. There's a big, large footprint there. If I did a comparison, you know the sort of things we're looking at. Look at this. Really fresh sign, a cutting implement, so they've got tools. This is where they've scrambled up. You see how the dirt's been pushed back, and it looks like it's running this way again. I've just, um, reached the top of the knoll that I was making to and uh, I found the start point for the directions which we call the datum point and it's basically 48 paces, double paces down the hill on a bearing and I'm looking for three prominent trees uh, two with webs at the base and one is actually lying over at 45 degrees so all I've got to do is walk on the bearing uh, for 48 paces and I should get to the area of where the cage is Through, through there? Or yeah, through there? Gone. The cache has to be retrieved to prevent the secret radio equipment from falling into enemy hands.
Now Chris Ryan must make his escape. Right, what I'm going to do now is just leave an Obi trap, just in case the Hunter Force comes under this position. I'm going to make it look like I've left this behind. It's a standard issue uh, shovel. One thing within the military, they're always taught not to pick up any, anything um, before checking out, so it'll be interesting to see if they do. And underneath, I'll have attached this grenade. When they pick this up, this will go off straight away. I'm going to slowly extract the pin out, so any movement on this will bring the handle up, and then the grenade will detonate. And I'm going to fix the grenade in the ground with this cord and a peg. the strip wire in there so I'm hoping when they come close to the eye line I'll be straight across at the, uh, the shovel and they won't see the trip wire. The hunter force have reached the point where Chris Ryan crossed the river the second time but they're confused by numerous false trails. The track stops here and this is obviously a change of direction. What we're looking for is if we can pick anything up on the other far bank. Yeah we've got sign down here by the river base here that it's going into the water. That he may have crossed to then go across this nipple and then cross it again. I mean, it's a lot of hard work in trying to put a bit of distance in it, but we don't know. I think of what he did, if he did cross here, and I think there's a strong possibility he did, it's much faster to cut across here, swim there, walk around the point, and swim back across over there. Look at all that ground that he cut, that he's just saved right there. But why would he cross the river in the first place? Why wouldn't he stay this because side and cross it here? That's three times. But don't you see, the cross isn't fast. The cross isn't long. The others don't think he did swim the river. They want to follow the tracks that lead back into the jungle. Yeah, I think we follow the trail that we've been following, even though it's... This is know, the trail that we've been following now. Yeah, but it stops. I'm just saying, yeah. what we were doing is we were following his sign. His sign took us to here. It's why I called, but I want to go on the, I want to go on the majority. If the majority thinks that, we're gonna, that we should stay on that trail, then let's do it. If we look at uh, Chris's latest positional beacons, the cache is actually at the base of the nine here. Now he's picked up the cache, continued south, and then come back up to his original position. And what he's doing here is just putting in a dummy leg that's going to throw the, throw the hunter force off his track. Well, I've just broken out of the uh, canopy now into this area. It looks like pine trees, but it's quite thick on the bottom still. It's a toss-up between being in the thick, thick undergrowth of the jungle in the secondary, or getting out here where the, the going's relatively easy. We are exposed to the sun and uh, it's coming down some. I've already finished uh, one and a half water balls and I've got to get to this next stop point. Um, I'm dehydrating uh, fast now. The Hunter Force believe they are still on Chris Ryan's trail, except Kenny Taylor. I put it to the team, and the majority of the team thought this is the better route. I chose to follow the team, let the team make that call. They're all super qualified guys, so it was an educated decision. My feet were soaking wet in the, uh, in the trees, and they were all wrinkled up. Uh, that, that prunish look when, you get, when you've been in the bath too much, and uh, I'm suffering from it now. Uh, I think there's, I feel like they're blistered up, or they're blistering up now, they're quite sore. By now, the hunter force are less certain they've taken the right trail. You make a decision, you live by your decision, that's the way it goes. We're adapting to uh, the decisions we made, you know? Don't have time to sit around and feel sorry for what you didn't do or what you did or whatever. got to get air on them because they start uh, cracking in between um, in between your toes and then on the cracks on these so it's just a matter of getting air on but as you can see extremely painful uh, blistered underneath my nails so they'll they'll come off at some point and this is all tenderized blistered there <sighs> yeah it's uh, it's the oncoming symptoms of trench foot the process is magnified with the heat and uh, humidity your feet just start falling to pieces Uh, the Hunter Force have had real problems trying to track Chris around this area. In fact, what they've done is they've followed a hunter's track all the way into the village of Lee Mariah. So 
They've now decided that they're going to take a boat back to uh, the nearest point to some high ground, thinking possibly that Chris is going to be doing the same thing and that that's possibly where the cache is located. You know the day destroys the night, night divides the day. And if we look at the progress he's made uh, since he left the cache down here, we can immediately see that he's moving a lot faster over this ground. If we look at his route, what he did was to put in a bit of a dog leg. Now it's not very obvious because this is under cloud, but if we look at the mapping image, then we can see that what we've got is quite a, a marshy stream running up to the lagoon. What he's done it was to move round the edge of that stream and up to his current position. The hunt force have made their way round to the bend in the river and are now heading up towards the high ground. Unfortunately though now, dusk is approaching. They can't move at night, it's just too difficult and dangerous. So they're going to bash her up now and continue at first light tomorrow morning on up to the high ground. Everybody's tired and worn down from the day. Uh, we got on a wrong, a wrong path and it just um, slowed us down a lot. So tomorrow we're going to uh, get back at it, go up to where we believe the cache uh, site might be, and uh, see if we can't find this guy. I got, uh, I got all my water filled up and uh, all I've been doing is, is drinking water slowly during the night. Uh, I must be well dehydrated because I haven't uh, needed to go there, uh, to pee, so there's nothing coming out. Uh, my feet uh, are blistered uh, from that walk with the, with the skin being so soft, so tomorrow will be interesting. It'll make it a, a lot harder. I'm going to fan out into the diamond. I want Simon to take the point. Nick, right flank. Ken, left flank. I'll take up the rear. We probably missed him yesterday. But there is a possibility that he could have laid down a blue trap or two. Slow us up. Watch for that. But just move slow and be ready for anything. But if he did lay a booby trap, look for that wire with a line on it or whatever. Yeah. All right, let's take us out then, sir. Trying to make sure that we're on the right track when you're navigating. You have to constantly update your position. It's based on pace and it's based on using your compass correctly. So, speed of movement is not necessary, accuracy of movement is. These marks on these trees have been cut by a cutting implement. You bracket the age of sign. And I'll squeeze that, there's still fluid in it, so it's still living. So I've got a track on where the uh, cache is. Let's take it that way, and then take it up. This is going to take us all the way to where we want to go. I hope we're right. I've just um, been on the radio back to base uh, to send in my uh, intentions, and they passed me a message. And the pickup now is uh, going to be late this afternoon. And it's at a place called Sabana. It's on the lagoon. <laughs> Looking at the map study, the ground that I've got to cover is this um, real deep marshy stuff and it's in the open. So what I'm going to do is actually get down onto the coastal side of the lagoon and walk along the water's edge rather than get into this deep uh, marsh. And it's going to be really hard going. You're going to be up to my thighs in, uh, in mud. We've reached the edge of the knoll that we think the cache is on. So I will go up, get as much information as he can from a distance, and then when he feels safe, he can go ahead and move in. Uh, at the same time, you know, still remember that uh, there's a possibility he could booby trap his area, so watch out for that. Kenny, right flank is clear. It's a straight line I can see. You've got an area of disturbance.